obviously adding a new class, you've got an add button here. Uh, there is a module course add from here. But one of the big deals is that if you are working with classes that you've already got a class in the system and you want to create a new course, uh, you would use the clone button. We'll talk about that in a bit. We're going to just say we're going to add a brand new class. So I'm going to hit the add button. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to. This is going to be a fall class, and the course number is ACE 999. The category is an is an open uh, just a non-credit class. It's an open class. We'll default it to be active. <clears throat> we're going to call this Chuck's. Chuck's webinar class. Chuck's webinar class. Again, a department. Uh, you can use that uh, for tracking the category of the class. We're going to put in the subject code. <clears throat> it's a six-hour class, so it would be 0 0.6 CEUs, six hours minimum. Um, we'll, I'll put in a minimum of five and a maximum of 12. And the estimated enrollment, that's up to you. And I, I think I can get 10 people. <clears throat> group count, we didn't talk about group count. Uh, but let me, let me cover that Se segue now, guys. Group count is that if you've got a program where you're never, ever going to have enrollments in them, you're never going to register a name in the course, but you want to keep track that the Vision of continuing at, at Ace Ward University held an open house uh, on the 3rd of May, and about 200 people showed up. That is what the group count would be used for, to kind of put in the state fair estimate of attendance uh, on a program that you never had any bona fide registrations for. <clears throat> and when you do that, there are some special reporting elements you got to watch for, but that's, that's what that's for. Okay. So we've got the group count, uh, the catalog code. Well, um, I created a catalog code, so I'm going to right mouse click and find my ACE 99 class. Uh, the account number, what is the account this falls into, who the coordinator is. Uh, Jeannie's covering me on this. Uh, the begin date. Well, that course is going to be the 17th of October. Now, and it's going to be two sessions. Now, you'll note as I'm typing this in, it is automatically adjusting things based on the schedule. The start date is always checked in your days of the week. So you can't, you can't say, uh, I want to uncheck Wednesday and find it on another day. It will always be whatever, as a minimum, the start date. Now, if this class was instead of meeting once a week every Wednesday, it was a, a Wednesday-Thursday class, you would need to click the day that that class meets if it's a sequenced class. OK, time. It's going to be 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. So at this point, it's uh, creating the schedule. I haven't set up my room yet. I'm going to put it in the Aceware Systems World Headquarters. And I'm going to put it in the lower level. And it's asking me to update the location information. So at this point, I have scheduled a class. Um, I pretty much have everything done on this first page. You'll note that the fields across the back are dim because I haven't saved this yet. If I want to, I'm ready to go on now, I do have to click the Save button in order now to go on and complete the rest of the class. Um, so additional user-defined fields, I'm not going to put anything in here. Uh, well, maybe I said, I, uh, Chuck, Chuck wants to know every time there's a registration for this class. So I'm going to put him as the blind carbon copy, no setup, any setup notes. Uh, you know, Perrier for the instructor, uh, supplies, special populations. If there was any other notes on this, we'll leave that alone for now. All right. Fees. Well, we're going to have a default. No, 
and entered. We're going to do an early bird fee here. Early bird fee of $250 if they register 14 days in advance. Now I'm going to add another main fee of the regular registration fee, which was $295. And then you might add, I might say there's a staff fee for this. For some reason, staff wanted to hear Chuck speak. $230. Now that's one, if I had AceWeb, I'd say, I'm going to hide that from the web. I don't want people to just self-select them as staff on the web. <clears throat> um, all right. Now, as you're adding fees, if you click Show All, one of the people have asked about, well, I, I want this to expire on a specific date. Well, if you do Show All now, it'll actually show you what the day is 14 days in advance of when this class is scheduled. You know that I'm kind of doing a class at the last minute, and so my early bird fee would never occur for anybody. Eh, leave that alone. <clears throat> Optional fees. Uh, again, add-on, optional fees. I'm going to add a, a book here, or calculator, and we'll say that's a $10 fee, and that is just a standard other fee. It's not mandatory, and we don't want to hide it from the web. So again, this is where you'd be able to put discounts, coupon code fees, and there is, again, help in the section to, to go about doing that. Instructors. Um, well, I guess if Chuck's teaching that, we're assuming he's going to be the instructor. Now, when you create, and, and we talked about instructors, so we're going to segue here. Um, Chuck is already set up in my database as an instructor. Now, that's obviously one of the big, big fields, and I should have had it on the PowerPoint, as an additional uh, element of the course screen is that you've got to create instructor records before you can add them as instructors to the class. Um, and the instructor record can be created from the name record. Uh, I'm going to go to my help button, if I can get my F1 key to come up. Alt-Y, create an instructor from a name. So if you go to a name record, press Alt-Y, you can actually create a record in the instructor table from the name record that you happen to be sitting on. Uh, but I already, have, I already have Chuck in the system here. One of the things that you can, and I would recommend also do, is again, make sure the availability days are set up the way you want. You can indicate their payment status, what level of access that you want them to be able to see if you have AceWeb. And then in additional info, you can set up payment type and the payment rate. That is the normal pay schedule for this instructor. This is an example we mentioned about a validated user-defined field uh, so that you have to, in my demo, you have to pick one of these different categories for class C, F flat fee, G percent of gross, et cetera, et cetera. And so if Chuck's standard rate is 50 bucks an hour, you could put that on his record. And then when you add him to a class, that automatically flows into the class. Um, and of course, once you add them to the class, you can change it. So that, well, wait a minute. This time we've negotiated with Chuck that he's going to get a per student rate of 10 bucks. You really got him talked down. <clears throat> so that his, his, uh, his calculation for pay will be the number of enrollments times 10 bucks, and that will be his pay schedule. And then these were those user-defined fields for tracking the score at the end of the class. 